In this video, I'm going to show how to perform the craniocervical flexion test. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Evidence suggested that deficits in neck muscle strength, coordination and endurance are associated with neck pain and headache patients, specifically those with cervicogenic headache. De Koning et al. from 2008 conducted a systematic review on the clinometric properties of, among others, the craniocervical flexion test, abbreviated as CCFT. They found ICC values of 0.65 to 0.93 for the intra-observer reliability. One study reported values for the inter-observer reliability with an ICC of 0.54. Based on the inconsistent results, the clinical value is rather weak. To conduct the test, the patient lies in supine crook line position with the head in neutral position. The line of the face should be horizontal and you can use towels to make sure that that's the case. The deflated biofeedback unit is then positioned behind the neck so that it abuts the patient's occiput. Then inflate the biofeedback unit to a baseline pressure of 20 millimeters mercury. Then the test is performed in two stages. For stage one, the patient is asked to slowly perform a head nod as if the back of their head was sliding up the bench until they reach a pressure increase of 2 mm mercury, so from 20 to 22, and to hold this position for 2 to 3 seconds before they can relax and return to the starting position. In case your patient has an apical breathing pattern, the nod is performed on exhalation. Repeat this process for each 2 mm mercury increment until you reach 30 on the biofeedback unit. This totals 5 stages. The stage that the patient is able to achieve and hold the pressure for 2 to 3 seconds with correct craniocervical flexion is the baseline measure. During the test you are going to observe for the following to ensure that the test is conducted properly. Analyze the motion of the head knot. With each stage, there should be an increasing angle of rotation. Patients might use more of a head retraction or lifting of the head in order to achieve the pressure increase. Furthermore, there should be minimal palpable activity of the sternocleidomastoid or anterior scalene muscles until the last one or two stages of the test, if at all. Also, the patient should be able to relax and return to the baseline pressure of 20 mm mercury between attempts. Stage 2 is performed if the patient is able to achieve stage 1 of this test without substitution movements. In this stage, you are going to test isometric endurance of the deep cervical flexors. The patient is in the same position as in stage 1. Then, they perform the head nod to the lowest level, so 22 mm mercury, and hold this position for 10 seconds. If they are able to perform three 10 second holds at that level, they can continue to the next level, which is again 2 mm mercury higher. You will check for the previously described compensatory strategies as well as jerkiness during the hold or a reduction of the pressure during the 10 second isometric contraction, which may indicate weakness or fatigue of the deep cervical flexors. In your evaluation, document the pressure level that the patient can hold steady for repeated 10 second holds with minimal superficial muscle activity or other compensatory strategies. All right, that was our video on the CCFT. We have other cervical muscle assessment tests, which you can watch in the playlist on the left. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel in case you haven't done so yet. Check out our assessment ebook and mobile app in the description down below. And as always, this was Andreas for PhysioTutors. I'll see you next time. Bye.